today's video, we're going to remove the stock exhaust from my R1250 GSA and replace it with... A couple months ago, I bought this brand new BMW R1250 GS Adventure. Uh, I've been really happy with it. I knew I was going to be. They're just fantastic bikes. There's really nothing bad to say about them, uh, or at least not very much. But one area where they, like pretty much every new bike these days, could potentially be changed is the exhaust. This is the factory muffler, and while it's probably not very restrictive, it is very quiet. And heavy. It weighs about 12 pounds. If you're looking at changing the exhaust on your motorcycle, there's a few reasons why you might be wanting to do it. First one is because of the sound. You want to get something that's louder or, if nothing else, more performance sounding. Um, maybe you don't like the look of the stock muffler, which, let's face it, there's really not a whole lot positive to say about this. It's big, and they tried to make it look good, but it's big and kind of unsightly. Um, you might be looking for more horsepower, or you might just also be looking for a weight reduction. So, for me personally, the, the horsepower was not one of the things that I was really concerned about. Um, this bike makes plenty of power, and reality is you're not going to generally gain much of a horsepower advantage on a stock motorcycle these days. Um, even with all of the noise reduction and things that they've got in here, they're pretty efficient. But there are the areas I was concerned with or looking for were making it look better uh, and also a weight reduction. So one of the things that I try to do on motorcycles where I can, especially when you're talking about something that you might use in a more off-road situation is try to reduce weight wherever I can. And I've had a number of people say, why are you bothering to reduce, try to reduce weight on a 550 pound motorcycle? Just go lose some weight yourself. Uh, I disagree with that pretty strongly. But if you think about your weight versus the motorcycle weight, it's, it's not entirely the same thing. When you're riding a motorcycle, your weight is actually Part of what you're using to control the bike, especially in a low speed setting where you're shifting your body weight and that's how you're trying to maintain balance, uh, how you're trying to get more weight over the front wheel versus over the back wheel. And while losing weight yourself is going to help the power to weight ratio, that's not really a problem on this bike. There's no shortage of, of power. And it's not a drag bike anyway, that's not what I'm going for. But when you lose say around five or seven pounds from it, then you've lost basically 1%, a little bit more of the weight from the bike. Um, so far, I've already removed about 12 pounds, and uh, the new exhaust I'm supposed to be putting on is uh, gonna, supposed to lose about seven pounds. We're going to weigh that here in a bit, and we're going to find it. So I looked at the different options and thought about what I wanted to uh, consider putting onto my motorcycle. And the one that attracted me the most was from GR Moto. Uh, what I liked about it versus some of the others out there was that it had the lightest weight and therefore the most weight reduction. Uh, I also really liked how it looked and I thought it was going to look really good on my motorcycle. It's very economically priced compared to some of the competitors out there. So I wanted to give it a shot and see what I thought about it. Uh, I contacted GR Moto and they were kind enough to send me one at a discount uh, to evaluate and give you my thoughts on it. So uh, let me get the box and I'll show you what you get when you buy it. Okay, so obviously I've uh, already opened the box and I took a look through it more than anything just to make sure that there wasn't anything missing before I went to go do this video, and there wasn't. Um, but I was really impressed when I opened it up. Um, you've got a compact muffler here, and open it up, first thing you have is a uh, little extender pipe just to uh, get the exhaust in the right position following the catalytic converter. A um, little keychain. Uh, you have some uh, assembly paste to seal it. And then the muffler itself. Pretty box. Clamps. And then you have the muffler. very well packaged and protected and they make different color options the one that I requested was the titanium color with the titanium uh, colored 
end cap. Um, they also have carbon fiber available. But this is very lightweight, and uh, after I get the old one off, we'll do a weight comparison and see. But uh, I really like how it looks, very attractive. Uh, one thing I'll point out also right here is that in the end, you can see that there's a noise restrictor baffle and you can remove this to make it louder. There's a set screw which you can access uh, from under here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some video uh, with the volume of it both ways so you can take a look or so that you can see what it is like and then uh, also after it's installed I'm going to ride it a little bit both ways uh, and see what I prefer and uh, give that the end of the video as well. When you take a look at removing the exhaust uh, from a from one of these bikes, it's really very straightforward. Um, you've got this, uh, you've got this Torx bolt up here. You've got three Torx bolts on this cover here, and then you've got the clamp underneath. Once you get that off, um, here you've got the exhaust flapper valve. Let's just get started pulling this old exhaust off. It'll probably take me about five minutes. So as you can see, I got the muffler removed. Uh, probably took about five minutes working slowly. Uh, and as you may have noticed, I also took the passenger foot pegs off of both sides. Uh, that's something that I wanted to do because I don't ride with a passenger um, and don't really intend to, and they stick out. Um, if I drop the bike, would rather not have them potentially break. So I'll put them on if I ever have to ride with a passenger. It takes just a couple minutes. Um, in here you can see the exhaust flapper which has a stepper motor driving it connected to these cables that will open and shut it. Um, <clears throat> I'll actually start the bike here in a minute and uh, show you how that goes and you can hear it. But um, yeah, uh, new bike so everything looks pretty clean as you would expect. Um, I just did a weight comparison. My scale measured uh, 6.4 pounds weight savings. So still I'm pretty happy with that, saving over six pounds. Um, so let's, uh, everyone loves to hear a straight pipe, so let's find out what it sounds like. So, next thing to do is to assemble the GR Moto exhaust, putting it on the bike. Um, it includes this exhaust sealant, so I'm just going to use some acetone and clean off the parts, then put the sealer on and put everything together. Um, in test fitting so far, um, I've noticed that, so on the adapter pipe, um, you can see it's got a reducer here to go from the stock exhaust side down to the muffler size. Um, this fits onto the stock exhaust here just fine, no problems. Um, on the muffler side, it is definitely a tight fit, so that's gonna require a little bit of force, but not a bad thing, that should seal just fine. So let's get to it. I've got everything cleaned off with acetone, but one thing I wanted to show you before I put the muffler on is just how nice and free flowing this is. Uh, you can see that this is a straight through muffler. Uh, you got baffles on the inside, sound absorbing material, but uh, you don't have any kinds of bends and turns and things like that. Um, when you look in, you can see the restriction from uh, this restrictor noise, re noise reducing orifice. Um, and you can see kind of the little pipe that goes in attached to it looks like, uh, but Ultimately, this is a pretty straight flowing exhaust. Uh, JR Moto claims about a three, three and a half horsepower increase with this. I'm not expecting to feel anything. You're talking about 135 horsepower motorcycle. Um, but theoretically, it is about 2%, so may feel something, especially in mid range. But in the end, even though, you know, some people might note that you're going from a larger pipe to a smaller pipe. Uh, reality at this horsepower level, this should not be a restriction at all.
All right, well, I've got the GR Moto uh, muffler installed. Uh, I'm currently in the one hour waiting period that they prescribe before tightening down the clamps. But you can see what I did here. Um, got their coupler pipe on here and then uh, slid that into the muffler after applying silicone on the inside of inside of the muffler here. And then I applied some both on the inside of this connector pipe and then also around the outside uh, of this here just to make it easier. Um, moving to the back here real quick, I just want to show you how simple it is to remove, uh, remove this restrictor. I'm going to do some video with the sound both with and without it, um, but I'm going to hold the camera and assuming that I can do this without losing that little plastic piece there. All you need is a five millimeter Allen. Reach up in there. Take that screw out, try not to lose it. And then there you have it. And you can see just how much more that opens things up. I'm sure that there's gonna be a volume difference uh, that goes with that. So like I said, I'll do some recording both ways once it uh, is dry and ready to go.
now you've seen my unboxing of the GR Moto exhaust installation and gotten some sound clips of it both with and without the baffle in it. Um, overall, I would say I'm happy with this exhaust and it's done what I was hoping for. Uh, the weight reduction of more or less seven pounds is significant and that was one of the things I was hoping for. Um, I like the sound of it without the baffle. That was a big thing. It's louder than stock, which is what I was going for, but it's not obnoxious. Um, the one thing I will point out without the baffle in is that it's winter here, so I've been doing some riding below freezing. And when I first rode the bike with this exhaust, it was about uh, 20 or 25 degrees Fahrenheit out. And it did actually drone quite a bit at first. This seemed to go away as the exhaust and the motorcycle warmed up. Um, how much of this has to do with just the nature of the muffler and the exhaust versus the fact that it was really cold or maybe it was breaking in to some extent, I, I can't tell you what. Um, but yesterday I rode it again without the baffle. Uh, it was well above freezing, quite nice, and there was no drone whatsoever. Uh, with the baffle in, it's essentially the same volume as stock. Uh, so, one th so one thing that you could do depending on what your volume preferences are is if you wanted to keep it uh, around town with the baffle out and then if you were going to go on a long trip and wanted it to be quieter for hours and hours on the highway you could put the baffle back in for that. Uh, I will say I did feel like there was a power reduction with the baffle in place. With that baffle in place you've got basically a one inch opening and that's for, that for this size engine and this, making this much horsepower, that probably does create a restriction of some sort. Uh, it seemed like, especially at the top end, I felt like I was noticing something. Uh, appearance, so that's the last one. Uh, when I first took, it out, took the exhaust out and compared it to the stock one, I really liked it. When I first put it on the bike, I will admit I was a little unsure of, of how it looked and if I really liked it. And the more I live with it, the more I really do like the way that it looks. I think one of the things when you first put it on is that it's so much smaller than the stock muffler that that change, uh, that, that immediate change that you notice is kind of striking. On any GSA, the proportions tend to be a little bit lopsided anyway, uh, unless you have panniers on the back. The back end of a GSA is pretty thin, pretty narrow. The front end, you've got the big sticking out cylinders and then you've got this enormous tank. So it kind of looks a little bit off-centered just because you've got this huge front end and you've got this tiny back end. But if you think about it, the thing with any GS is that it's also supposed to be functional. This is a bike that's supposed to have a big tank that, so that you ha have long range when you're going on a long trip. Um, you've got the boxer engine that carries its weight low and helps to make the bike very well balanced. And well, what do you need all a bunch of extra stuff in the back for? It's not helping you. So to me, the more that I look at it, the more I really do like it. And, and I think that it's a good looking exhaust. So overall, I'm happy with this. I'm glad I put it on and I'm gonna be keeping it. I think I'll just continue to ride it without the baffle in place. That's my preference. Uh, but I'm gonna keep the baffle in my motorcycle spare parts cabinet and probably take it with me if I go on a long trip just so that I have the option of swapping it back in if I do decide I want it a little bit quieter on a long trip. So I hope that you found this useful and interesting. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments.